Hello, my name is Yuri Resnik. I work for Brightco, and today I'll be talking about optimal design of encoding profiles for web streaming. And uh, the outline of this talk will be as follows. I'll, I'll start with, uh, with basics. I'll, I'll talk about how streaming works, what are the ingest profiles, what were the approaches towards designing such profiles optimally, things like per title encoding, context aware encoding. And then I will uh, dive more specifically in a particular flavor of streaming, which is stream, streaming, uh, web streaming or streaming to web browsers as clients. I'll talk about why this problem is somewhat different and uh, try to show the problem, uh, the, uh, some approaches towards solving it, starting with uh, like extremely simplistic way and then a more complete problem. Uh, and uh, at the end, I'll, I'll show references for some papers that we wrote, which uh, probably will be a better uh, material to, to look in if you're really interested in, uh, in doing something practical with this. But in any case, uh, let's uh, uh, start with uh, the basic concept. So as you know, uh, adaptive bitrate or ABR streaming, uh, which uh, is deployed today by means of protocols such as Dash or HLS, is, uh, is a very uh, popular uh, model of delivery media over internet. And, and uh, uh, in essence, uh, when content is prepared for ABR streaming, it's encoded not in a single bitrate as it used to be in television, for example, but it's actually encoded in a whole uh, set of bitrates, uh, sometimes called stack or uh, ABR ladder. And, uh, and uh, each encoding in this ladder is uh, further uh, uh, split physically or indexed uh, in a sequence of segments and uh, the players uh, can then selectively decide uh, which uh, stream to pull next at each point of time. So uh, they could switch between one stream. They might pull, for example, uh, stream encoded at 2 megabits and then uh, if there is some event, for example, they notice drop in network uh, bandwidth, then they might switch to, to lower bandwidth. Or, or there might be some other factors that might influence uh, the client's decisions, but, uh, but this is a basic concept. So there are many, many encodes. Uh, and uh, and then the question is, uh, uh, what parameters of uh, those bitrates should be used for streaming? And these parameters are known as ABR profiles, encoding profiles, which is basically a, like a sets of those resolutions, bitrates, codec properties, and so on, that should be used for for each uh, encoding. And uh, uh, below are a few examples of this, going all the way back to 1998, first ABR streaming real system, where of course uh, the encodings were targeted to 28K modem, 56K modem, dual ASDN, single ASDN, and so on. Well, uh, nowadays we of course uh, live in a more luxurious. Uh, 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 settings and uh, bandwidth uh, that's available on networks is much higher, but uh, the concept is similar. So there are multiple bit rates and for example, HLS guidelines is producing, recommending uh, this set of resolutions and rates. Uh, Brightcove Video Cloud used to have this uh, static profile that are shown on the uh, right, uh, but uh, these are examples of uh, what ABR profiles mean. Uh, historically, those profiles were designed uh, manually, but uh, it, it was uh, really suboptimal. Basically, what uh, uh, was discovered since uh, 2015 is that uh, there are several ways, uh, there are several factors that influence uh, uh, the, uh, that should influence the design of those profiles. One is uh, sheer complexity of video content. So if, if this is a cartoon that could be encoded much uh, uh, more densely, you could uh, probably encode it at one megabit and, and it's going to look fantastic. If, uh, on the other hand, if it's uh, uh, high complexity content, sports games of some sort, uh, swimming, for example, well, then uh, there are lots of uh, motion pixels there and uh, you need more bits. So, uh, you know, going to maybe five to ten megabits is going to be necessary to get a good quality. Uh, so, uh, 
the content could be different. Uh, the networks could be different, of course, as well. You know, the mobiles versus uh, broadband is a totally different story. Have different uh, shapes of networks distributions as well across different operators, and uh, there are also differences in user preferences, uh, screen sizes, and and, and, and uh, such uh, factors. So. Uh, there are several uh, names by which uh, those dynamic uh, designs of encoding profiles are called uh, uh, in industry and literature. So, per title encoding is uh, used uh, following uh, original Netflix uh, blog on this topic. Content aware encoding is another term. Uh, the uh, adaptation to network uh, is called network aware encoding. And, and the full context uh, type of optimization is called context aware. So, uh, I'll, I'll uh, now in, in slightly more details about what each does because we will effectively be using same concept later uh, when we talk about web streaming. So this uh, per title encoding, uh, the credit really goes to Netflix who uh, came up with this term and, and what they noticed is that of course uh, different uh, videos uh, might have different uh, quality rate characteristics. So in this plot they show PSNR versus rate relations. And, and, of course, it shows that uh, those uh, characteristics might vary drastically differently uh, with, uh, with content. The second observation that they made is that if you are trying to uh, <clears throat> you know, assign uh, different bit rates to each resolution, then there is one argument that might suggest how to do it better. And, and the argument is that if you uh, think of quality rate functions achievable for each resolution and you look at composite of them, then there is a certain upper boundary in, in that space of uh, uh, quality versus bitrate relations that could be ach achieved. Uh, they called it convex hull, which is uh, you know mathematically not exactly correct. Convex hull means a closed body, closed geometric body. Here it's it's rather upper boundary, but but the point is still the same. And uh, so with this argument plus uh, sheer notion that uh, the, each content is different, uh, that that give enough of uh, intuition how to. Uh, try to optimize encoding profiles. Uh, of course, uh, it, uh, this approach doesn't say how many streams are uh, necessary or which particular resolutions to pick, but at least constrains the problem in a very significant way and, uh, and it helped to you know, progress thinking and design practical systems. Uh, now, uh, a bit more uh, uh, complete uh, definition of a problem comes with a uh, combination of both content and network properties. And uh, so this is content plus network aware encoding or context aware encoding. And uh, so basically what uh, we need here is we need to know quality rate functions, same as in case of Netflix. We also need to understand how players would be selecting uh, between different uh, bit rates based on uh, uh, on available bandwidth and networks. So in this case, the model is a simple truncation to the uh, like largest uh, bit rate that's not greater in, in ladder that's not greater than the available bandwidth. And, and then uh, if we also know the uh, uh, distribution of uh, uh, bandwidth uh, values that are observable in network, uh, we could actually use this player model and that distribution to uh, estimate what would be the probability of uh, pulling each rendition. So the probabilities will simply be integrals between each adjacent uh, uh, pairs of rates. And, and, and then uh, that uh, probability allows us to uh, compute average quality. What is average quality? It's a probability of each rendition times the quality that achievable there. And uh, if we know uh, average quality, then we could pose a problem, uh, optimization problem, and that is now let's find uh, find endpoints such that uh, this average uh, quality that we just described will be optimal. So this is a complete uh, setting of a problem. It, uh, it yields exact resolutions, it yields exact bit rates. So in, in this example, uh, we uh, take three different uh, videos of different complexity. We also take two networks and then we throw them 
to the optimization uh, uh, engine and it generates uh, those sets of ladders and what we can see is that of course for different uh, content uh, based on complexity you know you will need to spend more bits and also based on uh, properties of networks, uh, distributions of networks, the bit rates will also be chosen differently. So the, uh, this, net, uh, this proves that you need to account for networks. So network two in this case had a much uh, kind of uh, broader and flatter distribution. Its uh, uh, peak was at about two megabits as opposed to one megabit in first network. And of course, all, all, all bit rates get shifted towards it. So, so that's, uh, that was the uh, concept of how we can adapt to properties of content and network. And now let's try to uh, talk about web streaming. So what happens with web streaming? Well, with web streaming, we actually have one other, another dimension of uh, uh, that uh, can be taken into account and another distribution. And that is distributions of sizes of video player windows that people will be using when they are uh, viewing content uh, from web browsers. So some viewers might be just uh, stretching it full screen, some viewers might be just leaving it in web browser as is, and some viewers might be just, uh, you know, uh, creating a collage of 10 windows on their uh, desktop and putting uh, this particular window somewhere in corners and, and stretching video and uh, to look even smaller. And, uh, and uh, with all those uh, different uh, settings of course uh, the uh, uh, you know visible uh, uh, video windows will be different the uh, viewing angles to those windows will be different the number of pixels effective in each window will also be different and uh, and uh, what we know about it well uh, from analytics system first thing we know is that we, we of course can see those distributions and they actually uh, you know, create some patterns that uh, seem to be pretty stable for each diff uh, for each uh, operator or for for different web page that is being used with particular layout. So this particular distribution that is shown here is actually from streaming of a U.S. Open event uh, last year, and and you can see that it produced about. Uh, 11 resolutions that uh, in composite took over 90% of uh, uh, cases uh, that were uh, totally out there and uh, some of these resolutions were used much more often than the other. And by the way, only 480 uh, was uh, standard resolution in this uh, or almost standard resolution in this case. Uh, other resolutions uh, are not. Uh, so so the, the bitrate ladder was uh, just not uh, well tuned as it could be easily observed. But uh, the next thing that uh, uh, we notice is that uh, the sizes of video players actually do also have an effect on which renditions will be played by, selected by player. It's not only bitrate that apparently uh, influences that selection. It is also the resolution of the video. So on the plot below, we show the uh, probability of selecting uh, of each rendition based on uh, video player size. And uh, we could see that, for example, the 270p rendition was uh, uh, selected in majority of cases when uh, window size was uh, 270p or less. And uh, likewise, uh, the highest resolution 720p was uh, uh, predominantly used when the window size was larger. So, and, and, and same selectivity could be observed for other resolutions in the middle. So, so uh, this uh, kind of showcases that uh, uh, web players, uh, uh, in this case it was VideoJS, but I suspect many others as well, uh, do you have uh, extra checks in their logic that uh, makes them selective to the resolutions? And, and this is important. Uh, uh, this is really an important uh, discovery because uh, it, uh, it really means that uh, uh, the probabilities of selection of different uh, bit streams uh, will not be as uh, dictated by properties of networks. It will be as also dictated by properties of uh, user preferences. So now, Given all this, uh, uh, can we actually design? Uh, we can actually uh, try to pose a dual problem uh, to the one we posed before. So instead of thinking of network, let's try to think of just pure uh, 
uh, adaptation to player resolutions and assumes that uh, a client has a certain uh, quantizer looking step functions that would uh, uh, just pick uh, closest resolution or uh, with some uh, you know boundaries uh, to uh, the player windows that's uh, currently being used and also that we have as input to this problem the distribution of player sizes has been observed for example from similar event uh, by same operator and uh, what else we need for this is actually we need a new quality model and, and this quality model is not PSNR not SSM it's actually a quality connecting uh, the uh, resolution and not only uh, number of pixels in encoded content, but also number of pixels in the uh, window to which it is uh, projected and effectively also pixel density because and uh, viewing distances, uh, it all uh, needs to be factored in and, uh, and it computes a certain uh, uh, scores that correlates to human uh, a perception of quality based on, on, on those settings. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about this model, this particular model, but uh, so far let's assume that we just have this and, and in this case it's sufficient to think that uh, two parameters are essential, which is uh, resolution of encoded content and player resolution as E and as P. Uh, respectfully and, and then if we have all of this we of course could uh, you know compute what would be the average uh, quality right and uh, we could pose uh, optimization problems that looks exactly dual to the ones that we've shown before so it's uh, find a set of resolution points such that uh, you know the quality is, is maximum now uh, before we uh, uh, start talking about how to solve it, we still need to figure out which uh, quality metric we need to use. And for this purpose, we will use a, a very well-known model. It's uh, been designed by Westerink and Roofs in uh, 1989. Uh, they did a very significant, serious uh, uh, psychophysical study looking at different viewing uh, uh, distances and uh, sizes uh, of uh, projections on the screen and uh, and effective uh, like angular resolutions of the content and uh, what they uh, discovered is uh, is quite interesting uh, they discovered that there is a, a relationship between uh, logarithm of viewing angle and there is also a relationship between uh, logarithm of angular resolution it's uh, usually measured in cycles per degree uh, but it uh, saturates at some point and and, and they even produce this uh, very simple uh, mathematical expression to describe it. so uh, how can we use it well uh, we need to connect that uh, model to parameters that we have available and in our case these are parameters such as encoded video resolution which i call se then player uh, video size which i call sp uh, uh, sorry, encoded is s sub e uh, played s sub p and, and then we also need to know a couple extra parameters and one of them is the uh, uh, viewing angle and also the distance and uh, and to uh, get it all uh, together what we also need uh, a few formulas here and uh, we also need to make some assumptions and uh, luckily for pc monitors they're pretty simple so the viewing angle to the viewing distance to monitors at least most ergonomic recommendations suggest uh, it to be about arm length or 24 inches and uh, pixel density for many years uh, has been standard at 96 dpi of course uh, modern era displays uh, are, uh, like retina displays uh, go beyond but in most of cases uh, the rendering engine is uh, still decide, uh, uh, like uh, configured says that people uh, are projecting uh, content at for example hd resolutions so, so the effective uh, 
uh, pixel density is still uh, pretty close to, to that uh, original recommendations of 96 dpi. So, so this is a, a easy uh, or relatively easy and relatively stable parameters that could be plugged in and, and then we could uh, uh, you know, use simple mathematics uh, to derive parameters that are relevant for Western Groove models and connect them to uh, parameters that we have available, which is video size as encoded and as re rendered. And, and that creates this uh, uh, two-dimensional uh, figure that we've seen before. So as sub -E here shows the uh, resolution as encoded, as sub -P shows resolution as rendered, and Q means uh, most score at uh, 1 to 10 scale, as it was in the Western Groove paper. And uh, what it actually shows is that uh, a slight uh, stretch of a video up uh, might, might improve quality a little bit, but only slight stretch and only at very low resolutions. Uh, but as you stretch it more, uh, the quality actually decreases, and and, uh, and and this model, you know, quantifies this exactly, and 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 it gives this instrument to you. So, given this model uh, and uh, parameters that we already considered, so let's use same distribution of uh, resolutions as we've seen from US Open event. Let's uh, also. Um, uh, things that we have encoding ladders that has uh, same resolutions as we used uh, for streaming of that event. So it was from 270p to 720p, so, uh, five renditions. The uh, selection logic is just a mid-thread quantizer. And, and, and then, uh, you know, let's uh, assume that the number of points is going to be all the way to five. And... Uh, uh, there are certain constraints of uh, bit rates. And, and these are the optimal ladders that uh, numerical technique generates. And uh, there are two quality values that I report here is one uh, quality at the top rendition and also the average quality, which is the last parameter. And the average is actually most important. Why? Because, uh, uh, and on the right, by the way, uh, I report same parameters for the original uh, ladders that we used for US Open. And uh, what we can discover here. So for the original ladder, we used five renditions and we managed to get uh, average quality of 699. Well, guess what? Uh, this optimal choice of uh, resolutions, if we look at optimal ladders, uh, we see that we can get even better average quality with just two renditions. So just... Uh, uh, seven, uh, for 80p and 875p, uh, if we, or of course uh, something closer that is, is uh, valid, uh, like uh, by video standards resolution, uh, would be sufficient to to to, to get uh, uh, same if not better quality than five ladders we used uh, for for that event in in production. So so, and of course if you add more. Uh, resolutions, what we discover is that, uh, you know, you actually don't increase things much. So, so adding three resolutions will uh, get you a little extra delta, but uh, adding more resolutions than three makes no difference whatsoever. So, so, so uh, very strong arguments for uh, designing optimal ladders that could be obtained by, by just uh, following this simple optimization procedure. Now, uh, in, in practice, however, now we really need to uh, think about more general problem because, uh, of course, uh, players will select uh, rendition not only based on the uh, resolution, but also bit rates. For example, if uh, bit rate is limited, uh, it's not going to select higher uh, resolution even if player is stretched. So, so we need a model that uh, of player behavior that uh, captures. This. So the uh, simplest ones that I could uh, think of and uh, which actually correlates very well with what we see based on statistics uh, of selection is actually this one. We just uh, look at index of renditions that uh, could be selected by uh, 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 just considering bitrate and considering resolution separately. And, and, and then let's just pick a smaller one. Of course, the assumption is that the, uh, both bitrates and uh, resolutions are monotonically increasing. So, so this is a conservative selection that player can make. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, for the ladders that we used in our earlier example, the plot uh, on, on the bottom 
right shows how this uh, selection logic will look. So it's a staircase, but it's now a two-dimensional staircase. And uh, so, so that's a viable player model that could be used. <coughs> now, but uh, here is another complication that really needs to be accounted for. So the uh, in uh, uh, our optimization for based on pure resolutions, we use Westering roof model. But uh, 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 if we uh, try to account for a bit rate, we also need to, to, to know the codec noise model because uh, uh, the bit rate will influence uh, the degree to which uh, things get quantized and, and so we will see lower <coughs> PSNR or SSM. So in this case, uh, so what uh, uh, we did is we took clustering group models and uh, first thing we did is we generalized it and extended the dynamic range and, and used uh, 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 nicely uh, like uh, compounded functions going to zero if uh, you know either of dimensions goes to zero and it saturates uh, uh, at, at higher values and uh, that's important to, to, to make sure that algorithms the, the numerical algorithms converge uh, and and second uh, what uh, and and as you could see the original models is here shown as red and the extended ones that we obtained by this formula is blue and and, and they match with pretty uh, high accuracy <clears throat> but but then we also need to add another dimension and in this case we choose uh, to use SSM as a uh, measure of uh, codec noise. So there is an extra term that uh, goes under the logarithm, and and uh, and uh, we basically calibrated uh, this uh, uh, extra term and parameters connecting them to stay consistent with the original model in dimension between uh, resolution and viewing angle, and uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, you know the. Uh, SSM adds extra dimension where uh, you know we have additional decay or increase. So, and and we tuned it to several data sets and uh, particularly uh, you know this uh, Netflix data set we actually see pretty remarkably accurate uh, uh, fittings. So it's a RMSC of 0, 3 to 9 at uh, 0 to 5 scales pretty good. And uh, of course, Netflix data set doesn't have a variation along viewing angles. So we use multiple other data sets to, to, to do this tuning, but uh, but it, uh, it it works and uh, and it actually works pretty, pretty reasonable. So now that uh, uh, we have all these ingredients, uh, uh, we could uh, define more uh, general optimization problems. So, so we still need to have quality rate, uh, not quality rate, now noise rate relation, it's SSM rate function. Uh, then uh, what we will call quality is, uh, is a more uh, like uh, a comprehensive uh, uh, figure that now accounts for also resolutions and stretch factors. Uh, uh, then we of course need to know the player selection model. In this case, it has to be two-dimensional, accounting for both uh, rate selection and uh, and uh, resolution selection. <coughs> then uh, uh, we also need to know network properties, uh, so distribution networks, and we need to know player size distribution as well. So these are the ingredients. Uh, then uh, the quality models that we just discussed uh, earlier could also be recalibrated to use uh, inputs of R, which is rate or equivalently noise uh, from SSM, uh, as well as encoded resolution and player size resolution uh, subject to uh, you know projection to uh, PC settings with other calibration parameters as we discussed earlier. Uh, but uh, given that uh, quality model and uh, other parameters distributions, we can now define the average quality. And what would be the average quality? Well, it will actually be uh, uh, a double summation. So the first will be the sum over uh, uh, player uh, sizes uh, with uh, probability of each size being the factor uh, that goes into averaging. And second is uh, it's actually integral uh, across uh, bit rates. Uh, 
uh, this uh, probability of each bitrate and, and then when we compute quality, the quality is now computed with respect to, of course, rates that will be selected at uh, this particular combination of uh, network rate and uh, player resolution and resolution that will be player res uh, encoded resolution that will be selected based on same parameters. So it's a more complex formula, by the way, there is a missing comma between S and R uh, uh, sub I and S sub I in the last uh, in uh, sub expression for Q, but, uh, you know, but it's uh, still, uh, you know, uh, explains the concept. And, uh, and, and then, as we know, this average uh, quality expression, we can pose the optimization problem. So in this case, we need to find a set of rate and resolution points such that this uh, combined figure of merit, which is quality computed based on all these factors, is maximum subject to, to certain constraints. It's that rates are increasing within certain range, uh, resolutions are increasing in certain range, and we also uh, typically impose uh, certain limits on first uh, uh, rendition in, uh, in the ladder because that affects uh, the buffering probability and some other things. So this is uh, usually also important extra constraint uh, to the problem. So, but uh, given all of this, uh, the problem is now solved and uh, it's actually a pretty challenging problem. So I uh, uh, will only say that uh, it really needs numerical techniques to solve it. Uh, the, uh, you know, things like player selection logic here is discontinuous and, uh, and uh, practically uh, you know, network distributions could be histograms and, uh, and so on that uh, you can't expect them to be nice, but uh, but it could be solved with some. So uh, if you're interested, uh, soon enough there will be published a full paper uh, describing this. Uh, uh, solution, uh, but uh, in principle, the methodology that we just used, described, uh, has been also pub uh, published previously in parts. So there was a paper at uh, uh, Packet Video Workshop in 2018, uh, we also published last year at uh, uh, ICME, and, and there was a, a paper in recent uh, SMPT uh, journal, Motion Imaging, uh, which uh, showed quite a few details. So, uh, conclusions. Uh, well, uh, ABR streaming has been around actually since 1998, but yet uh, we're really still trying to understand how to do it right and, uh, and even how to define the, uh, the problems in many cases, <clears throat> as we've just seen. Uh, previous approaches, including uh, design of uh, ABR profiles, accounting for properties of content, networks, they certainly have helped and uh, helped us to uh, advance our understanding of the subject matter. But uh, the uh, distribution of player resolutions, uh, window sizes, uh, is, is another interesting dimension. So what we've shown is uh, how it could possibly be uh, attacked uh, and uh, and you've seen that uh, it actually requires definition of whole new quality metric and uh, uh, but uh, it, it's still solvable and uh, but clearly more work uh, and uh, hopefully more fun is still ahead as uh, you know I don't think this uh, uh, distribution of uh, resolutions will be the last factors that we will find uh, as important and influential in, 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 in streaming. There ought to be more. So in, in any case, on this note, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and feel free to reach me out by email. Thank you. Bye-bye.